Tommy that he was uh, he was all right. But um, you know, we we knew as as that at that went on, and, and ultimately when he got in the dugout is when we really knew that it was it was the right time. And um, you know, I think it was the it was the right decision um, to to get him out of there. I, I'm not second guessing taking him out. That's for sure. TCL is a proud sponsor of the Score North Studios. Enjoy more of the things you love with TCL. These two guys have Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. Sore is 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 definitely a word yeah. that I would use too after yesterday's game. Just maybe the right. oh, the, I other, see what you did there. the other the other spelling. So, of oh, not sore. the O A R O O R E. Yeah. Okay. Hey, real quick. Okay, so Rocco Baldelli commenting on the Josh Donaldson uh, tweak. I don't know what you what you want to call it. Strain. Um, they're calling it a hamstring, and we're going to get into all of this here in a second. But he said as the at bat went along, did he not? It looked to me like he pulled it running the bases. Did they know that his hamstring was sore while he was batting? Did I he thought, start the game with a bad hamstring? And- I bet you, because uh, I, I thought the same thing. I think oh. he's talking about the at-bats that came subsequently after Donaldson doubled. So I think he's talking about as the at-bat. I think the he's inning. saying the at-bat. So oh, like Polanco the came up. Players, Sano he's came standing up. Out there. Kepler okay. came up. And as he stood there and... <laughs> Probably grabbed his leg a few times because of the oh, because God. of the said tweak. My guess is they thought to themselves, "We really should probably take him out of this baseball game." Man, so well, an exciting opening day. Just uh, a, a heck of a day for the Minnesota Twins. They get a day off here to hopefully stretch their hamstrings and regroup after blowing a three-run lead. Um, we need a day off. Oh, yeah. One second, stretching this one out. Yeah, Declan. Oh, I think I think yeah. Declan might have pulled something just pushing that yeah, that's button, not gonna, pushing the Rocco Baldelli sound. That's not going to help us, though. Oh boy, that's no. not going to help us. But you yeah, know what does help us? us when our Minnesota sports teams bleep the bed like the Twins did yesterday, and really like it would be difficult to script a more buzzkill opener where you lose <laughs> your best overall player in Josh Donaldson, uh, and it, it's not like oh he just it's you know he's been healthy for the most part in his career. Like no, this is a guy with chronic issues with his legs and calves. And he's out for some undetermined amount of time. Your bullpen melts down. All right, let's do this. Now on Mackie and Judd. This chart makes it as clear as I can to you. The pie chart of blame. You want to blame somebody? And gentlemen, the pie chart of blame, I think fittingly, is brought to you today by our friends at Federated, who provide risk management resources for your business. If you're a (laughs) business owner and you're looking for peace of mind and risk management... Federated Mutual Insurance Companies have been around for over a hundred years. Do they insure baseball contracts? Because <laughs> I'd know, like there, there's a certain four year, ninety two million dollar investment that I'd love to get my hands uh, on some of that some of that cash and have yeah. Federated, my friends at Federated, pay it out. You know, the good news is there's a full list on FederatedInsurance.com of industries that Federated does work with and protect. And so. <laughs> You know, maybe if you're Derek Falvey or Thad Levine, you might just want to go to federatedinsurance.com today. You could check out My Shield. My Shield uh, is a new resource, the online client destination for risk management resources. Find out more about how Federated can protect your business and give you peace of mind at federatedinsurance.com or download the app. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. The Rock knows how you feel about pie. All right. Everyone knows how this works if you're new to the show. Uh, this is mostly a, a post Vikings game segment, but we dusted off when the other teams bleep the bed. The pie chart of blame for yesterday's opening day debacle by the Twins. Judd, lead us off. Because we treat baseball as football, because there is no loss too minor for us to break down, because there is no game once the regular season starts too unimportant for us to break down. I bring you a pie chart in six pieces. Six pieces of pie? Hell yes. Wow. I got a lot of blame to go Six around here. Six pieces of pie. I'll, a sharp knife here. Yeah. I'll start it. Well, you know what? I am Who's cutting the fam- pie? I am famous for my big pieces of pie, or my small <laughs> pieces of pie, I should say, because my pies have a lot of pieces to them. All right, I'm going to start at the bottom here and work my way up. Um, 
I've got my pie chart here. I've got my scorecard from the, the game here. The Rock knows how you feel about pie. <laughs> and I will start with a five, two 5% chunks of pie. The first one I'm going to give to what might be at first an unlikely suspect, but he's really not, Miguel Sano. Oh. He had a hit in his first at bat in the third and then came up in the fifth, the sixth, and the eighth, and he struck out each time, including, including with the bases loaded in the sixth. Two outs, he's at the plate, he has a chance, the Twins have three runs in, he has a chance to break this sucker wide open, wide open. Miguel Sano, we're all saying, you know, show us something. And his first hit of the season, a little flare to right field. I really liked it. I thought it was on the right track. So I said, yeah, you know what? Show us some more now that the bases are loaded. A little flare to right field. A little Judd's flare like, to this right is field. It. He's, this is this is this is He went the other way. Peak Sano. So... <laughs> That is a 5% chunk of pie. My next 5% chunk of pie is going to go to the, cheap the, ads. the first guy. <laughs> no, the problem is they weren't cheap. If they had told Donaldson to buzz off, it'd be in a lot better shape right now. True. 5% chunk of pie is going to go to Tyler Duffy, who comes out of the bullpen. It is a it is a very much 2021 uh, situation in that. High leverage guy comes out with uh, with um, one out in the fifth, couple of guy or a guy on base. The Twins need help here, and Tyler Duffy is in the game. A predicament in which you know, 15 years ago, there's no way that you would put a reliever you trust as much as you trust Duffy now in, but you do it for this very reason. And he gives up what back to back hits. The Brewers score a run. The point being is. You were looking for him to shut the Brewers down, and he really didn't come close. A two 10% chunks of pie. Andrelton Simmons, I sing your praises all spring about how your defense is going to be the answer to our prayers, how you are the anti-Polanco, about how you are the most sure-handed shortstop, gold glove, Phil uh, went through all the statistics and analytics for us on how different this guy is going to make our lives when we see how good he is with the glove, flashing the leather. And Miguel Snow, of all people, starts what should have been a 3-6-3 or 3-6-1 double play by making a perfect throw, which is really tough to do from first to short. And Simmons, I don't care if the sun was in his eyes like they talked about. I don't care what the predicament was. He dropped the baseball. He drops the baseball. And the Brewers score a run in the fifth because of that. Yeah. Nice yeah, work. Yeah, I mean, it is it is pretty – and obviously, like, this is one of 162. And over yeah. the course of time, I think you're going to find that Angleton Simmons is a generationally great shortstop. But it just sort of – it was par for the course yesterday. Of <laughs> course, of course, the greatest shortstop since Ozzie Smith defensively. And I am and I would, I would put him on the same level as probably Omar Vizquel. Like, not yeah, as much is- of a household name. Fantastic. And, of course, he makes that yes. bobble at second base yesterday, of course. Yes. So he gets a 10% chunk of my pie chart to blame. Uh, the next 10% goes to our guy in the dugout, Rocco Baldelli. And it's really based off this. In the 10th, okay? You start with a guy on second. Uh, oh. Navarez gets a hit. And then instead of instead of walking Arcia to load the bases in that predicament mm-hmm. to set up a force out on the ground ball to, uh, to second base, you don't. And so now it's a must tag play at home plate. And what? Um, the ball is hit high in the air to second base. Polanco comes home. Garver tries to get the tag down. Does not. I'm very confused about why you wouldn't like like this is. And I I got this tweet from a fan uh, yesterday, and it's exactly right. This is akin, situationally, to three-on-three OT in hockey. Like, it's not a normal... Like, you start with a guy in second base. So, like, you got to think outside the box as to if something starts to go wrong, what the approach is going to be. I'm a little bit confused there. So, I think... So... Yeah, there's a there's going to be some interesting strategy discussions about the bottom half of these innings. The top half, your goal is to score as many runs as possible, right? Correct. But the bottom half, you've you've already sort of seen you, the yes. other team has served, or you, I guess you have served <laughs> offensively, and you've sort of seen how it goes. 
Yes. And so I would even, and I don't know if the inning would have played out differently, but I would even consider walking the first hitter so yes. that there's, because because like that run doesn't matter. If the winning run is on second, right, and some of it depends on like, all right, let, you Bingo. know, the, what part of the lineup's coming up? Would you, would you rather fa- like if you walk the first batter? Does that mean Mike Trout is going to hit third in the inning? Like, you know, so there's certain things lineup wise you have to take. But into this was not that. But yeah, no, I, I, I you're hear right you. here. I would you're think right. that you'd want. I would, I would think that you would want as many force out opportunities as possible without yes. like loading the bases with nobody out to put a ton of pressure on your pitcher to not throw a ball, right? Agree completely. So there's going to be a lot of a lot of dissection, I think, in in that. The uh, Rock knows how you feel about pie. final piece of pie. Seventy percent it goes yep. to the obvious yep. suspect, Alex Colome. What are you doing? Like beyond the meltdown on the mound itself. What are you doing when you get a ball hit back to you? You're up by you're up by I believe three at that point. Throw to first base and get the out. And now there's two outs. And yeah, there's a guy on second, but you're up by multiple runs. Yeah. Just throw to first base and you get cute and you make too high a throw to Polanco. Now every buddy is safe. Um, it just made no sense. Yeah, like it, it. It just made it was fundamentally just absolutely a brain fart and stupid. But he melted down, and I get that part. But he could have avoid. He could have saved himself all of those problems. And now you, you got to face Yelich. Now you know all hell's gonna break loose. So seventy percent goes to that move because that decision to throw cost them the baseball game. Yeah. So there. Are. So give us the recap again. Judd Zilgat's oh, pie chart of blame here. Colome seventy percent. Baldelli ten percent. Andrelton Simmons, welcome to town with that glove of yours, ten percent. <laughs> uh, and then Duffy and Sano five percent each. All right. So I'm uh, I'm going to go with four evenly sliced pieces of, oh. of pie here. Okay. Just okay. four. I'm just. I, I like to keep it simple. Just 25, 25, 25. Uh, 25 percent to the shadows. It's just it's very difficult to play shortstop when <laughs> shadows. I would say the the wind gets 25 percent. The Twins would have had five more home runs if not. No, I'm just kidding. Um, all right, piece of pie number one. Josh Donaldson's 80 year old legs. Yep. I mean, if it's not calves, it's hamstrings. This dude literally spent the and I'm feel like I like this dude like he's a great player and so I, I want to be respectful of him as a talent and as a player and I think as a leader to in certain areas but he's got 80 year old legs you know he spends the entire offseason reworking his running motion and presumably finding more treatments for his calves and I am not a medical expert but sometimes when you Sometimes when you put a ton of focus on one area it can lead to problems in other areas or sometimes when you have weakness in one area is it would it be kinesthetically? I don't know. Maybe there's yeah, a. I think that's right. Kinesthetically, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to stand cloud. Yep, I think that's <laughs> like right. Like when someone has an elbow problem and they start to compensate for the elbow <laughs> yeah. problem, their shoulder goes out, right? And so I just wonder if he spent the entire off season, if if it is indeed a hamstring injury, which I'm not a hundred percent sold on. I wouldn't be shocked if it was a calf, and they're like, eh, let's ah, let's not get people to panic too aggressively. But what really, when, when your message is, don't worry, <laughs> it's just a hamstring injury for a guy who's in his mid 30s, uh, it's a problem. So Josh Donaldson's 80 year old legs. 25% to just across the board atrocious defense, plays that should have been made. Uh, they were credited, I think, with two errors, but they were just plays that should have been made all over <laughs> the, the diamond. The right yep. So horrible defense. I think their defense is going to be a strength for them if if they keep Andrelton Simmons and Byron Buxton on the field. And, I mean, Josh Donaldson's going to be out for a while at this point. Mm-hmm. Piece of pie number three. I'm going to say the Twins' propensity to melt when the lights are the brightest. Ooh, like and that it. can be playoffs. Opening day has not been super kind to this franchise over the years as well. I mean, I don't, I don't have the record in front of me, but it just seems like there's a lot of bad things that happen on opening day for the Twins. And this this might have taken the cake just in terms of the meltdown and Josh Donaldson going down. But it just kind of feels like when when more people are watching and staring, the Twins rarely rise to the moment. And I don't know if it's just coincidence. It's multiple eras of GMs and managers and players. But 
Yesterday, it wasn't like the lights were super bright. It was just brewers and twins on opening day. It's the, yeah, you're <laughs> but, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I can't. How bright it, can it be? But it's the first game of the year. It's a new TV network. There's fans in the stands for the first time in a year and a half. And Are you talking about Bally's? melted down. Bally Sports Network? Is that what you're talking an, about? An American Family Ballpark? Let's I'll talk about let's things. talk about Bally's after our pie charts. Let's get yeah. our we'll get our initial right. reviews of Bally's. It's okay. And Miller then Park. pie chart or, or piece of pie number four. It's probably unfair to just like lump him in without lumping in mm. other hitters who also failed. The Twins left a million runners on base yesterday. But Judd brought up Miguel Sano and Miguel so Miguel Sano came up multiple times, a couple times with two outs, runners in scoring position or bases loaded, and he struck out three times in that game yesterday. And so the reason I'm putting Miguel Sano in this bin and sort of singling him out, it's a career achievement award piece of pie for Sano. Miguel Sano's career batting average with the bases loaded is 159. 159 is his with, career With how many strikeouts? Batting average. Do you have that in front um, so of you? He has come to the plate 50 times in his career with the bases loaded. Mm-hmm. And he has 21 strikeouts in those 50 <laughs> plate appearances, 42 percent strikeout rate in in uh, situations with the bases low. He has one grand slam, so he, yep. he has the one grand slam. That's good. But he is terrible. He's one of the yes. worst hitters in baseball with the bases loaded. There, yes. I mean, it, it is. Royce kind of alluded to it earlier this. I think it was on maybe Wednesday's edition of Rapping with Royce. He said in those key moments late in the game, two outs, you. There are very few hitters you'd rather see at the plate if you're an opposing team than Miguel Sano. And a lot of a lot of fans might be like, what are you talking about? The guy can hit the ball 500 feet, yeah. not with the bases loaded. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's done it once, so that's he my pie chart. for a bad at bat. Miguel Sano, mm-hmm. the Twins' propensity to melt when the <laughs> lights are the brightest, horrible defense, and Josh Donaldson's 80-year-old legs. Declan? All right. As the Rock uh, knows how you feel about pie. As Judd alluded to, I'm a gentleman. I'll work at the, uh, start from the bottom, work my way up. Uh, my smallest piece of pie, I got four pieces of pie. 5% goes to Major League Baseball. Not the sport of baseball. Not, not the idea of baseball. Major League Baseball. There is a league here where we have to have a pitcher bat still. We are in 2021, and you cannot have a designated hitter. We had it last year because it was fun, and it was weird, and it was a 60-game season. But, oh, no, we're not going back to it this year. We got to have pitchers hit. We got to have your best player on the bench if you're the Twins. Major know. League I th- Baseball. I thought that, that, that Woodruff at bat was totally. absolutely The Maeda at bat where he bunted the guy to second was, be- was beautiful and resulted in runs. So both of you. You know, I, I couldn't imagine being a football team and, you know, you're in the AFC and you can't have a three wide receiver set because, uh, you know, the AFC only has two wide receiver set limits. You can't, you know, you can't have enough fun in your lineup. So Major League Baseball, you get 5% of the blame just for your dumb rules and I can't stand it. So 5%. Ball, uh, Josh Donaldson actually gets blamed for me here. 10% of my blame goes to Josh for the injury because then it just set off another catastrophic things of events. So you have Luisa Rise, who was in left. He now has to come in to third. Jake Cave now has to enter the game and be in the lineup for the whole game. His injury is, is a string of problems that end up happening for the Twins. So actually, I do put blame on Josh Donaldson here. His injury caused <laughs> wow. an issue that rippled throughout the course of the game. So Josh Donaldson does get 10% of my blame. Uh, Baldelli gets 15% because there, maybe this is more of the bright lights and the prime time situations. So I kind of understood why you put all your firefighters out after Maeda. You went Duffy, then Stashek, then Taylor Rogers, Hansel Robles, who actually looked pretty damn good. I'll eat my own words. I texted you guys that I think this, if this, anyone's going to blow it right here, it's going to be Robles. He looked awesome. He was firing bullets. Good for him. And then Colome. So now... Column A comes in, and I'll get into the blame there with him in a minute, but after that, you know Josh Hader hasn't pitched yet for the Brewers. So you know if you go to extra innings, you're probably going to lose this game. And in Josh Hader's case, 11 pitches, 9 strikes, 5 swinging strikes, 3 strikeouts. You didn't stand a chance. I saw some tweets saying, well, it was their best contact hitters they could face. Like, those are the best guys you could have up. It doesn't. It didn't matter, dude. It's Josh Hader. It's, you, don't, you don't stand a chance against Josh Hader. Zero chance. So Baldelli gets 15% with just the management of the game. My final chunk of pie, 70% goes to Alex Colome. Brother, you, 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 had, <laughs> you had a pinch hitter coming up to lead the game. Then you had the top of the lineup. There's a runner at first. All you have to do is throw that ball to first in the other hand. Because if you throw to second, Christian Yelich is coming up. 
So the uh, one of the best players in the Major League Baseball. Worst case scenario, you take that out at first, and Yelich comes up, hits a bomb, you still have a lead. You still have a one-run lead. And instead, you try to get cute and turn a double play when you could have just got the second out of the inning right there by underhanding it to first, dude. So Alex Colomay gets 70% of my blame, too, for not recognizing that you are facing the heart of the Brewers' order. So my four pieces of pie, 5% to Major League Baseball, 10% to Josh Donaldson, 15% to Rocco Baldelli, 70% The Rock knows to Alex how Colomay. you feel about pie. Wow. Ther- that was therapeutic. That was therapeutic. It was. Are you guys, so Judd has him at 96. I have him at 94. Yeah. Declan had him at 90, what, 92 or something? Uh, yeah, I think 91, 92. 91. Are you yeah. guys, after the first game, after the first game, I, we have to stick to our predictions because that's how it works. But, like, if you could take a mulligan and re-predict, would you come off of your prediction after <laughs> no. one game? No. After it's one, one game? No. No. No, I'm so not. Good. I mean the Josh Donaldson thing. Now we all expected he would miss some time. Yeah, I don't think he's. I don't think he plays in April at this point. Oh, I agree completely. No, no, he won't play. In fact, if, if I had to put five bucks down on this, I I say his next appearance is somewhere around like May tenth or something. Oh my God. It, he's thirty five, <laughs> and it's now? a hamstring. Like I don't like. Let's just say that it has nothing to do with the calf. Okay. Nothing. The calf is. It's not involved, which I find hard to believe. But let's just say that. He's a 35-year-old man with a hamstring problem then, okay? He's like, when's the there? last time, when's the last time, Phil, that you said, you know, that makes me feel a lot better. It's only a hamstring. Dude, dude here's what doesn't make any sense to me, okay? <laughs> so we, we, you know, we watch, we watch football on a regular basis and basketball and hockey, right? And let's say basketball and football, because those are at least like, it, and with hockey, it's, it's a, it's a different mechanic. You have, you have yeah. knives on your feet, for God's sakes, right? So it's just different, different motion. Basketball players... Soccer players, football players are bursting, sprinting for hours. It's just like boom, 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 right? Every play, up, down. Mm-hmm. And like when's the last time you heard of a basketball player like pulling a hamstring? It it never happens. When's the last time a Wolves player like missed a month with a hamstring or a calf, right? So in these sports where you are running all the time, and maybe that's part of it. You're just you're running all the time, and so your muscles are properly stretched. In baseball, there's a lot of standing around and your muscles have a chance to cramp up. Like this dude pulls something and is out for months every single year. Does he? Is it something that is unfixable? Are there not yes. trainers or methods out there no. that he can tap into? They've tried. Like, He's tried, dude. This is his fourth time now. Uh, 17, 18, 20, and now he has, we like to call it a chronic condition. Like we should just call it what it is. Something about his body and I'm sure his age is sabotaging him. Like these these are the type of things that eventually get people to retire. Because you're right. Like if this was a really common thing, you you'd say, eh, it's bad luck, right? Like it's bad luck and he's having bad luck. This is clearly when we're talking about four times, and when as Dex has said before too, Phil, when we're talking about a guy who came out on Twitter last year and said that I've done this seven times in like a two year period. That's chronic. That's a condition. Like he has a con- like we need to accept the fact. And it, but this is also why when we all and we're guilty of this fan base is this is why when we're always like, well, cheap poll ad, sign a free agent, sign Josh Donaldson. They signed him. You can't now turn around and be like, well, you should have known about this and done a better job. Like this is what happens when you pay aging players big contracts. Yep. It really he is. was he was one of the best players on the market. He's a former MVP. Clearly, when he's healthy, he's impactful. But uh, hey, because I because we have to get to uh, Gerson Rosas and we have to get to Judd's first ever viewing of the Mighty Ducks inexplicably for Sports Movie Rewind. Your quick, yeah, your guys' quick true. thoughts on the debut of Bally Sports North for Twins games yesterday? I actually um, don't mind it because well, one, it's a name change and it's a brand change as far as like. A, Graphics go and stuff, but it's not like a huge change of announcers and and lots of things. Um, I don't love, but I don't mind the score box, which seems to be the most um, the most talked about thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people I don't like that the the out of town scores are just taking up half of the yeah. the crowd. Yeah, and the and, they, and, and that's going to be for they're going to be they gambling can fix that a little on bit. that once. It oh makes yeah, sense. but that's that's what's coming next too. Like. We have to brace our- ourselves for eventually here, like in-game prop bets and stuff are coming, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's that's what's coming. That 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 box is not there because this is how it's going to be now. That box is there because of what you just said. Like they are basically preparing for 
Um, log on now and bet on is is Miguel Sano going to strike out? The answer is yes. How much do you want to bet on that? Yeah. It's actually kind of genius. I mean, at some point, you're going to be able to open the Bally's app or something, the Bally's sports app. If Maybe it already exists, and there are, you can already do Dick this. Dick going to handle that? I he don't was, think. He was already complaining yesterday about both name changes in the ballpark with the so name. Like, it was but, subtly. It was subtle. It was I very Minnesota. His, so I was I, – so I'm an idiot, and so I had the, the MLB <laughs> package, <laughs> and I thought I only got access to the Brewers play-by-play no. feed. So I spent the first, like, seven innings watching the Brewers – Commentary. Come on, Boomer. You got and it. And then I and then I figured out, oh, you can just like you can choose which feed you want to watch. A so I, I finally got the Bramer Morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so was Bramer complaining about the name change? Uh he was just it was very subtle with the way he went about it. He goes, Well, you know, we got a lot working with us here. You know, there's a new ballpark, we got a new brand. I think we're doing a good job trying to mention it and not screw it up. And then I think even Morno said, Well, What's you did there call to it screw up. Well that well Morno then goes, Well, you did call it Miller Park an inning ago. Like he he, he did kind of throw him <laughs> under the bus, which was pretty funny. Um, I mean, I don't watch, this was my first time watching Bally Sports North. Um, I typically for wild games watch the opposing broadcasts like Phil with using a game center, you could say. And so I, I usually watch the opposing broadcast. I didn't mind it. It's 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 so nitpicky to just get upset over a lower third. Like for God's sakes, people, the game is on. That's all I care about. Is the game on? Are you are you really that upset that there's this portion of the screen devoted to AL West scores? Like, pick your battles. Pick your battles. Dick's, I don't know. Dick's people line. Dick's do. line was this. Um, it's it's not Bramer Sports Network. It's Bally's. I didn't buy the entire network. That was Dick's line. But the funniest <laughs> thing about it was the official debut, the first game with the new name, was the Wolves-Knicks game Wednesday night. And, like, Dave Benz couldn't stop saying it. Like, yeah, Bally's Sports, this is great. Bally's Sports, Bally's Sports, Bally Bramer barely mentioned Bally Sports. <laughs> yeah, he's just trying to stay away from uh, screwing it up. So yeah, I was I was fine with it. I like I like the branding. I like the colors. Uh, I'm good. I with like the, the colors music, more. The music change finally get some different music than the but um but um but um but um. Like we've been hearing that for 20 years. I like Actually, the red. 25 years. Yeah, I'm the with red, you on that. It's sharp, so it I'm stands here for out. It, and I'm all about uh, opening up the floodgates for more uh, gambling and more vices. So, so <laughs> I'm I'm for it. All right, boys, we gotta <laughs> we gotta reset here so we can talk to our friend, President of Basketball Operations, Gerson Rosas. And do a deep dive into a Minnesota sports movie classic, The Mighty Ducks. That's your pie chart of blame for the Twins' opening day debacle. The Rock No.